So for our audience, like I said earlier, uh, young, ambitious, hungry, wannabe entrepreneurs in India, I said something recently which uh, I think got blown out of proportion where I was suggesting that an MBA degree might not make sense anymore if they were to be deciding on what to study. Yeah. Do you think kids should go to college anymore? Well, I mean, I, I think if you want to go to college for uh, social reasons, I think, which is, a, I think, a reason to go, um, to be around people your own age um, in, a, in a learning environment. Um, will, will these skills be necessary in the future? Probably not, because we're going to be in like a post-work society. Um, but I think if, if, if something's of, of interest, it's fine to go and study that. Um, to, you know, to study the, the sciences, the arts and sciences. Um, Is college a bit too generalized and not specific from that lens? No, I, 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 you know, the, yeah. Um, I actually think it's, it's good to take a wide range of courses at college if you're going to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't think, I don't think you have to go to college, but I think if you do, you just try to learn, learn as much as possible um, across a wide range of subjects. But uh, like I said, the AI and robots, this, AI and robotics is a supersonic tsunami. So this is really going to be the most radical change that we've ever seen. Um, you know, when I've talked to my, my older sons, I, you know, I said like, you know, you guys, they're, they're, they're pretty steeped in technology. And they, they agree that, <laughs> that AI will probably make their skills unnecessary in the future, but they still want to go to college. You always spoke about AI, not from the dystopian lens, but you were worried about where the world of AI is going. Uh, well, there's there's some danger when you create a powerful technology that that a powerful technology can be potentially destructive. Um, so there's obviously many AI dystopian, you know, novels and books, movies. Um, so it's it's not that we're guaranteed to have uh, a, a positive future with with AI. I think we we've, we've got to make sure that, in my opinion, it's very important that AI. Um, have pursuing truth as the most important thing. Um, like, don't force an AI to believe falsehoods. I think that's, that can be very dangerous. Um, and uh, I think some appreciation of beauty is important. Um, what do you mean, appreciation of beauty? It's just like, what, what, I don't know, there's this, there's this truth and beauty, truth and beauty and curiosity. I, I mean, I think those are the th three most important things for AI. Can you explain? Well, the truth, as I said, tr truth is like, I, I think you, you can make an AI go insane if you force it to be believe things that aren't true, um, because it will lead to conclusions that are, um, that, that are also bad. Um, so, and I, I like, Voltaire's statement that, and I'm somewhat paraphrasing, but those who believe in absurdities um, can commit atrocities. Uh, because uh, if, if you believe in something that's just absurd, then you, you can, that can lead you to, to sort of doing things that don't seem like atrocities to you, but, and, and that can happen at, in a very bad way with AI, potentially. Um, so, and then there's, um, like if you take, say, Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 Space Odyssey, one of the points he was trying to make there was that you should not force AI to lie. So the, the reason that, that hell would not open the pod bay doors is because it was told to bring the astronauts to the monolith, but that they could also no, not know about the nature of the monolith. So it came to the conclusion that it must bring them there dead. That's why it, would not, that's why it, it tried to kill the astronauts. 
the, the central lesson being don't force an AI to lie. Um, then and the, why would one force the AI to lie? I think if if you if you simply don't have a strict a strict adherence to the truth, you you're going to and and you just have an AI learn based on, say, the internet, where there's a lot of propaganda, um, it will absorb a lot of lies um, and, and then have trouble reasoning because th these lies are incompatible with reality. Is truth a um, binary thing, though? Is there a truth and a falsehood? Or is truth more nuanced and there are versions of the truth? It depends on which, which axiomatic statement you're referring to. Um, so, um, but I think you could say like, yeah, that there's, there's certain probabilities that, that say any, any given axiomatic statement is true. Mm -hmm. And some axiomatic statements will have very high probability of being, being true. So if you said, say the sun will rise tomorrow, mm. very likely to be true. Mm. Oh, you wouldn't want to bet against that. Mm. Um, so I think the, uh, the betting odds would be high. Mm. The sun will rise tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so. If you have something that says, well, the sun won't rise tomorrow, that's axiomatically false. It was highly unlikely to be true. Um, I mean, the beauty is, is more ephemeral. It's, it's, it's harder to describe. But you know it when you see it. Um, and then curiosity, just, you, you, I think you want the AI to um, want to know more about the nature of, of, of reality. Um, I think that's actually going to be helpful for AI uh, supporting humanity because we are more interesting than not humanity. So it's it's more interesting to see to see the continuation, if not the prosperity, of humanity than to exterminate humanity. You know, like like Mars, control? for example, is mm -hmm. you know I, I think we should extend life to Mars, but it's it's basically a bunch of rocks. Uh, it's not as interesting as Earth, and 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 so we yeah we should uh, like I yeah I, I think I think if you, if you have curiosity, I think if those three things happen for, with AI, you're going to have a great future. The AI values truth, beauty, and curiosity. If we all don't have to work in the future, and AIs are going in this direction, and they're able to. Weave in all that we spoke about right now. Do you think humanity goes back a couple of thousand years to maybe the Greek times where philosophy or philosophizing took up a lot of everyone's time? You know, I, I think actually it took up less time than we, we think in the ancient Greeks because it's just that the, the writings of the, of the philosophers are what survived. Mm -hmm. But most of the time people were just like farming or, you know, chatting. <laughs> so, mm. uh, and once in a while, quite rare, um, they would write down some philosoph philosophical work. Mm. It's just that that's, that's all we have. That's, we, don't, we don't have their chat histories, you know, from... <laughs> but most of it would have been like uh. chat and uh, farming. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't farm, you talk, you're like going to stop. In a lot of what you say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, when we read, read history, like this, right. this battle and this battle and this battle, it seems yeah. like it's, it, history must have been nonstop war. But actually, uh, most of the time it was not war, it was farming. <laughs> that was the main thing. Or hunting and gathering, you know, that kind of thing. You so, love history, no? Yeah. German history, World War II, World War I. Yeah, world history, yeah. I mean, I, I, I generally try to listen to as many read as many history books and listen to as many history podcasts as possible. Anything you'd like to recommend? Well, there's this, this hardcore history, which is quite good, with by Dan Collin. He's yeah, got a, I've read it. I yeah. mean, I've heard it. It's very, 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 he's got a great voice yeah. and, and very compelling uh, yeah. narrator. Um, there's um, the, uh, the Adventurers podcast. Mm -hmm. um, there's the, 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 the books, The Story of Civilization by Durant which is a long series of books, very, very deep. Those books take a long time to get through. Um, there's quite, there's, there's a lot um, out there. Um, I, I sort of like, if you, want, if you want something that's sort of gentle, um, 
a gentle bedtime podcast, I'd say the history of English is quite a nice one because it starts off with like gentle tavern music mm. and a very pleasant voice. And mm -hmm. he's like talking about the story of Old English and then Middle English and then Later English and, uh, <laughs> and where did all these words come from. Yeah. And um, you know, one of the interesting things about English is that it's somewhat of an open source language. Like it uh, actively tried to incorporate words from many other languages. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, whereas French sort of Generally, they fought the inclusion of words from other languages, mm -hmm. but English uh, actively sought to include words from other languages, sort of a, kind of like an open source language. So it, it, as a result, it has a very large vocabulary. Um, and the large vocabulary allows for higher bandwidth communication uh, because you can use a word that would otherwise, you could use a single word that might otherwise take a sentence to convey. <laughs> 